In this video, I'm going to show you how you can upgrade your Dell XPS 15. Okay, I just received this week my new Dell XPS 9530. This is a 13th generation processor uh, with all the bells and whistles, the latest NVIDIA graphics processor. I'm really happy with it, but if you're like me, if you've ever priced out a Dell XPS, you realize quite quickly that uh, maximizing the RAM and the storage can be a very expensive prospect. In my case, it was about $1,000 more to get the size storage that I wanted and, of course, the, uh, the amount of RAM that I wanted as well. I realized quickly that uh, I could purchase the RAM for a few hundred dollars instead of spending that thousand bucks. And I already had an SSD that I plan to use anyway. Uh, and it, there's actually a spot for a second SSD that I'm gonna take advantage of. I've got a spare 250 uh, gigabyte drive, uh, same brand and, and uh, model type as the two terabyte that I'm gonna throw in here as well. So let's get started. I'll take you through the process and some of the considerations that you need to make when upgrading a Dell XPS 15. So this is a brand new laptop. I don't want to scuff it up or scratch it up. So I like to take um, a towel, clean towel, just place it down below. And that way, if I'm flipping it over and, uh, you know, unscrewing things, I'm not going to scratch up the surface of this laptop. First things first, I'm going to take my little kit here and we'll just use my little tiny T5 Torx screwdriver to remove all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. Now, the first time you pry off this back cover, it might be a little more difficult than later times because, of course, it is uh, very tightly attached here. So what we're working with is the uh, SSD is located right here under this brass looking cover and our RAM is located right here. Now it's important to note that the RAM that you need is DDR5. You can check the specifications uh, with the Dell website and um, we're going to be upgrading the 512 gigabytes uh, SSD that's here to a two terabyte model. And I, I actually have an extra stick of 250 gigabytes, something in that range there. And I'm going to pop it into this position here. So uh, first thing you want to do is uh, make sure that your battery is disconnected here. So we'll just pop this out. That's just an extra precaution uh, in addition to turning it off here. It's just a little ribbon cable here that you can see there. Now I've disconnected that. No power should be running to anything. There is um, like a retaining clip for the SSD. Uh, the, the brass or metal uh, cover and there's a thermal pad underneath this that just helps to offer overheating protection. And there's one single small screw right there. And that's going to um, just come off. And you'll see that once that's removed, I'm just gonna put that aside in a safe spot. You can just pry this up quite easily and uh, just slide this off of that post that's there and that's going to remove the heat sink, if you will. Again, you can see here that there's a, a little bit of a thermal pad underneath here. I suppose you could probably order, um, you know, a replacement or an additional version of this uh, to go in the second position, but I just have some um, individual thermal pads here that I'm going to use on the second drive there. So I'm going to remove the stock SSD from here, place that aside, 
you can use it in something else. Just remember that if you've got personal data on that, you're going to want to back it up before you start any of this process. And, uh, you know, make sure that if you are going to be uh, using that SSD somewhere else, that you're going to want to uh, format it before you do so. So I've got two sticks of um, Samsung SSDs here. Let's see, let's bring this a little closer here so we can see that there's my two terabyte one. So I'm going to place that again just in the little um, socket here until it clicks in. And then we're going to place our thermal cover on the post here. Might take a little wiggling to do. And once, if you've positioned it correctly, the thread, the screw hole for that should line up for that. So we'll just pop that on and thread that back on place here. Sorry for the shadows. It doesn't have to be super tight, just tight enough to hold the, the SSD in place. So as I indicated, I have a second stick here. And let's see, that's 250 gigabyte. I like the, uh, the Samsung um, SSDs. They're faster than usually what comes stock in laptops. Um, now, the screw for this is actually located on the inside here. There's one over here, of course. And then there's uh, the one I've already removed here. And it's just uh, on the back cover of the laptop. So I've already removed it. And uh, I can just put that on my magnetic screwdriver here. And we'll thread that into place there. And my intention for this second drive here is to just store all my installation software. So if I ever have to format the main drive here, I'll have all my Adobe and TechSmith software that I use ready to go there. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to update the RAM. There's two memory modules. I purchased this laptop with 16 gigabytes of RAM, DDR5. And I'm going to upgrade it to 64. So there's these almost um, paper-like covers over top of the RAM. But you'll see the retaining clips and you just push them out. And that should release the RAM from the clip there. You can remove these. I'm not entirely sure why these are needed. But I think I'll put them back in place just in case they provide a function. So I'm just going to remove these old RAM chips, put those aside. And uh, I picked up, like I said, um, I went with Crucial here. So let me just show you those. Let's flip them around. So I've got two sticks of, um, of uh, 32 gigabytes each. And those will go here. And we can just place this little sleeve over top of it again. And just press that down. It should clip into place here. Same thing for the other one. We'll put that sleeve back on. Again, I'm not sure what purpose they serve. My last Dell XPS did not have these. But those are now in place there. I guess it offers a little bit of protection from shorting out. And of course, I mentioned that I did have some thermal pads, and I'm just going to place these over top of the second drive. Uh, like I said, you might be able to order uh, a replacement or an additional cover for just such an occasion, but I think a couple thermal pads that will make contact with the outer case is probably enough to protect that. And that's it. It's not a complicated task. Um, don't forget to reconnect your battery, which is what I'm doing right now. And then we can make sure that's nice and snug. Everything is pushed down appropriately. And we'll take our back cover again, place it on, and just kind of press firmly 
in all the corners to make sure you're clicked into place before you start putting those screws back in. One of the things that I recommend uh, before you start this process is that you have the, uh, the Dell XPS OS reinstallation software. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video um, because it will include all of the drivers and most drivers, not a big deal. Windows Update will probably find those for you quite easily. But where this becomes crucial is that if you only have a Wi-Fi connection, um, you know, you're going to want to obviously already have the Wi-Fi card um, driver installed or handy so that you can at least get past the installation process. But the OS recovery software is quite useful, uh, especially if you don't want to mess around too much with drivers. Okay, so the final step in this process essentially is we're going to plug this back in, insert our USB thumb drive that the OS recovery software would have uh, installed to for you, boot it up again and reinstall your operating system and you should be good to go. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.